What's up, Pure Mind? It is Merck back again in the theme of sound design this month. Uh, I want to give you guys a little bit of an in depth look into tips and tricks that I like to use and kind of like workflow um, tips that I use for my tracks to prep my bass lines and start writing bass lines for my, for my tracks. So, to get started, what I have loaded up right here is um, just a very simplified kind of template that I usually run off of. So extremely simple, straightforward, but that's what we want because we want to focus on the bass line. So we're, I'm just going to basically go into Massive and show you guys from an initialized patch or preset how you can start developing a really effective kind of bass line or sub um, that has some attitude to it. We'll probably use just two oscillators, um, run it through a filter, put some effects on it, and then maybe we'll do like a sign shaper insert just to add a little bit of drive to it. But uh, let's get started. So the main goal when I'm going in to start designing these sounds is to build something that is not just focusing on pure low end. And usually when people are just starting out, that's what they tend to do is they hear a lot of like, you know, okay, if you're making a bass line or some kind of sub bass, you need a, a pure sine wave. Um, and that definitely is true and you, and you can do it that way. But um, if you add a couple more layers, you can start to bring out some of that mid range that's really gonna help the bass cut through the mix and kind of shine through the rest of the song as opposed to kind of just covering the very sub frequencies and kind of getting lost. I'm gonna leave the first one where it's at um, and then I'm gonna go to the second oscillator and I will make this our sine wave. So I'm gonna go to sine square, I will leave the wavetable position all the way on the sine. I'm gonna bring them down an octave just because, you know, we're playing with subs, sub frequencies, so we don't wanna to have to take the MIDI too low. So I'm just gonna start playing this. And then I'm gonna bring in the sine. And I'm actually going to basically make like the sign the main layer and I'm just going to use the first oscillator which is going to be mostly a square in this case um, as the kind of texture. So I'm going to bring up the sign all the way and then let me turn down the, the square. Okay, so that's pretty good for now. Now I'm going to start kind of going through some steps to beef it up a little bit and add some character to it. So I'm going to go over to our first effects unit. And I'm just going to put on a classic tube, just to add a little bit of drive and kind of depth to it. And then what I'm also going to do on the second one is a dimension expander. Um, I use dimension expander all the time. It really helps kind of widen things up. Um, you don't always want that with a bass because the bass is usually going to be monophonic and it's probably going to be sitting right down the middle. Um, so if you spread it too much, you can start to kind of take some of the power away from it and some of the drive. But use it sparingly and it will really help kind of widen things up. So I have a MIDI clip in here that's playing a very simple sequence. Uh, I just want to solo that MIDI clip and I'm just going to let it play through that sequence and then um, kind of do the sound design as it's playing back. So I'm going to solo that. Here's our selection. So I have the two oscillators, one slight square with a little bit of a saw on it. Um, and then the second one is going to be our low end, the sine wave. Um, I'm going to route both of these oscillators to filter one, just so we can put a low pass on there. Maybe we can automate that um, or get to that in, in, a, in another part. Um, so right now, if I play it, you should barely be able to hear the top end because we're cutting it off with a low pass filter, right? I'm going to add a little bit of resonance on there. There we go, we can hear it starting to come through when we open up the, the cutoff. So now what I'm going to do next is something that's used usually for, this is like a trick you'd use to kind of make an 808 from scratch. Um, what you may notice about a lot of 808s is that it's not just about the low end and kind of like a big boomy sub, it's also about the impact of the sub. And so instead of kind of just rolling in, which can work and definitely like provides enough low end, um, but I'm gonna do I'm gonna do another step so that the uh, one of the main oscillators kind of has impact when it first hits, and it's uh, I'm gonna do it to the sine um, because that's our main layer. If I go to the uh, 
first envelope inside of Ableton, I'm just gonna use this to kind of shape how we want the pitch adjustment to move over time. So I'm gonna make it kind of a really fast, as if you were shaping some kind of pluck or something. Bring down the level. And then I'm gonna take this envelope now that we've set it up and I'm gonna assign it to control the pitch of our main bass layer. And you could do it to both, you can kind of experiment. Um, but let's just see how this sounds. So to route it, I'm just gonna drag from our envelope one to the pitch control on oscillator two. And then what I want it to do is pitch uh, down really quickly so we get that impact. So let's try like three octaves and just see how this sounds. So a little bit overdone, but you can tell how you're immediately just getting this. It's almost like having a muffled kick drum in there just to supply um, impact. Okay, so let's kind of just finesse the first envelope now. I'm gonna bring up a little bit of feedback just to kind of fill it out. Okay. And then now I'm gonna go to the main envelope for the sound and kind of shape how it's moving just in general. I usually like to back off the attack on my subs a little bit. Um, we got the punch and that's important so that it kind of has a little bit more character to it and it punches through the mix. Um, but I also don't want it to collide with anything else in the track, mainly like the kick drum, um, which side chaining can definitely fix that. But if you just back off the attack, it will kind of help out as well. Bring this down a little bit. So let's start to just kind of hear how this would sound with everything else. Okay, so it sounds good for now. Um, I'm going to take the first envelope and also apply it to the filter and just see what we can do if we can get the filter to kind of open at the same time that that pitch cutoff is happening, the pitch uh, bend. So I'm gonna route this to filter one. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm noticing I'm clipping a little bit, so you always want to watch out for that. And then I'm going to go to this, the classic tube and maybe bring down the drive and bring up the drive light a little bit. All right, so it's pretty good for now. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try one more thing. Like I said before, um, the sign shaper is really good for creating these subs. If you want to add a little bit more of those like higher harmonics and kind of push the sound, um, you have this really nice sign shaper with the drive control. So that is kind of like the first step. Is just going in and trying to get the sound that you have in your head or that you've you're kind of imagining to work well with all the other sounds or instruments, in this case, just percussion. Um, you just gotta go in there and kind of try to imagine what you want and put it out at least as close as possible for now. I mean, we haven't even done any processing. There's a slight EQ8 on here that's just doing a pretty small boost um, in the mid-low range, and then cutting off a little bit of the super highs and adding some around 10K. Um, but other than that, there's there's no processing done. So that would be kind of like my first step is just, just to go in, tackle the synthesis, get the sound to, you know, sound close to what I want it. Um, and I think for now it sounds pretty good. So I'm also gonna go to the voicing just because we are dealing with low frequencies and a sub, I'm gonna make this monophonic. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PureMind.com.